Boss blood must be spilled to appease the masses. <laughs> like that, whatever freaking happen. But it's not just going to be any boss, folks. It will be one that has seen coverage on this channel before, but has never once faced the wrath of what might be one of our greatest allies, and yet potentially the most dangerous, tentacles. The dragonfly versus the hentai, folks. Let's get to it. And if you're looking for tentacles, where better than the re-trap set piece? Now, not every world will contain one, but you will know you're in the right spot if you see just a bunch of reeds bundled together as seen here. And you'll definitely know once the tentacles start come knocking, as there are dozens of them that riddle the area around the set piece, so you better watch your butt. And with this in mind, it should probably go without saying that trying to clear this yourself is just asking for a bad news beard situation. So I highly recommend you don't try it. Instead, perhaps just wait for the white stuff to fall and then just have Klops help you out. Because his ice attack and range can actually see him survive quite a long time if you manage his position well enough within the reach wrap. And... It's just going to keep you safe in the process. Or you can even wait for our big fluffy friend to help you out. But the problem with Badger is that you will need to constantly re-aggro him in order to move him within range of the tentacles. Because he prefers munching over fighting. But of course, you always have the option to just do the job yourself. But I'd still recommend only one-on-one -on -one hentai battles for the time being. Avoid both swings and immediately run in and hit butt once only because staying too long even just slightly means a slap to the face. It is a tricky kiting pattern especially for newer players but you will get the hang of it if you try and you'll be rewarded for your patience as well. Because killing tentacles can provide a nice drop of two meat, a weapon called a tentacle spike that is the next best thing following a spear, and of course, the tentacle spots. The last of which is what we've been after this whole time, so really try to make sure to get as many spots as you can. Why you ask? Well, it's because we need to use the mass of them to amass on tentacles, a wicker bottom exclusive book. And if you cleared the reed trap of both its tentacle nightmares and reeds, you should certainly have an abundance of spots and reeds to make the papyrus needed. And I'm personally making but eight books here, but really the more the merrier, so get as much material as you want for as many books as you want. But then again, eight books might even still be overkill. Oh right, this is a boss fight, so perhaps we should cover some armor and healing, yes? Well... Yeah, but no, because actually this method sees us not tanking Dragonfly, and thus not taking too many blows to the noggin. So both armor and healing can actually be kept a bit on the lower side to be honest, but I still bloody recommend having some of course. That being said, what does this method actually entail? Well, it entails having to construct a large square of hay. Even though we are fighting a fire boss. You know, now that I say that out loud, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but just do it anyway. And then, as if I'm telling a bad joke or something, I honestly need you to just smash it all down. We aren't hammering the walls, as that would actually destroy them. Instead, we are either using Control F or Alt Click to damage them to their lowest state. It is going to take a while, and I'm so sorry about that. I personally tend to avoid using methods like these on the bosses, but it does turn out to be worth it. We do all that, because when it comes time to read our on tentacles, the closely placed floor of walls actually prevents any of the hentai from spawning anywhere within its borders. They will actually just spawn outside of the square, and you should see about three per book read. But make note that you will certainly be going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, as the book drains 50 sanity per use. And we will definitely be using a whole dang lot of them too. 
Oh, and I recommend either staying in the middle as such, or move a bit towards the side that Dragonfly will be on once the fight begins. Then, I'm gonna need you to build a wall around your pre-built arena of sorts. This is to prevent any of her larvae from causing a ruckus, but be mindful of your spacing while constructing it. You not only need to keep in mind of where your tentacles are to prevent you from being damaged, but you also need to create a solid border so that the larva cannot set fire when they explode. The explosion that happens when they die can send fire a little ways away, and if it does get close enough, things will begin to smolder, and then, eventually, if you can't handle it, it will burn it all down. So, make it wide, but again, it doesn't need to be ridiculous. But a couple other potentially not needed but still gosh darn useful things to have are the pan flute, an item that can be found near Glamour's statue or made personally and allows for the player to calm Dragonfly when she is pissed off, and Snurtle Shell Armor. An item that allows the player to quote-unquote hide under it while granting 100% damage reduction when doing so. The armor is not the easiest thing to come by, so I understand that it's certainly a highly optional thing to grab. But it will save your butt from danger. Oh, and a flingo never really hurt anybody either, so, you know, having one just in case is probably a good idea. But as long as you built your wall properly, you should be A-OK. -okay. But it's showtime, baby. Get her attention and sprint on back to your arena. And as soon as you're about three to three and a half walls worth within your hay wall square, stop and either tank a swing or two, or better yet, hop into your snurtle shell armor. You will be out of range, but she won't be. And as soon as she gets hit once or twice by the tentacles, you can be safely emerged and then watch as the hentai consumes her. But please, please remember to wall up your gap in your walls before you forget. The larva will slip right through if you don't come the spawning phase, and then... It's all over. But the horde of slappers will do thousands upon thousands of damage and she'll stand no chance. And you'll gain some scales along the way because of it. Now, when the larva phase does come into play, you'll really just need to wait about really. But you may find her acting a bit strange to be honest. I don't know what it is about the dragonfly tentacle method, but she loves to become in range and then just still fly around and not attack you. But if she does this, it's why we brought the flute. So just play it, attack her, run her back, and repeat what we just did in the initial phase. Give it but three combat phases in total, and the dragonfly will fall, having not been damaged by the player even in the slightest. And well done. You might have done a bit of work to get there, but when the time came, you just sat back, relaxed, and watched as hentai tore dragonfly apart from the inside out. Gross. But as for obtaining the loot that she dropped for us, you can do so the old-fashioned way by just running in and scrambling to get as much as you can over and over and over again until you got it all. Or, you can just plop on the lazy forager and just run about the dispersed loot and it will do the job for you. But whatever works for you, works for you. And as for uses for the loot obtained itself, we should already be very clear on what the many gems she will bestow on us can do for us. And remember that Dragonfly can drop nearly every type of gem apart from the iridescent one. So farm her up as much as you wish. But with the figure sketch, we can place it within a potter's wheel and then you will unlock the recipe to craft dragonfly figures out of marble and stone. And, as always, these statues can be picked up and moved to wherever you wish to do so. You'll also receive a blueprint for what is known as a scaled furnace. It's a structure that provides constant heat, permanent light, and can be cooked on as well. Furthermore, the scales will allow you to craft a scale chest. A chest that cannot and cannot burn at all while also providing extra rows of space to store as you please. Both are incredibly useful, but the furnace is where it's at. There is also scaled flooring and only one 
Dragonfly scale is used to craft six total turfs, and this can be highly abused when using a deconstruction staff, as you can dismantle all six turfs to net a total of five scales in return. Then, you can just repeat the process however many times you wish, as you now no longer need to even touch Dragonfly to get her scales. But there you have it everyone, a guide on how to use the tentacles, the hentai nightmare of the constant, to your incredible advantage against one of the bigger bads around. The uses for tentacles go well beyond Dragonfly's demise, so if you would like to see more, please just let me know. But for now, thanks for watching, well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!